Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be the start of a new reading vlog for me. And I'm going to be real, I still really have like no idea how to do reading vlogs, so I hope this one will be okay. The book that I'm going to be reading is The Binding by Bridget Collins. And you probably heard me mention this in a few videos because like this has been one of my most anticipated books. I've just heard a lot of good things about this and like it's just like stunningly beautiful. Like hello? So because this is kind of a new book, I think I would like to keep this video spoiler free for the most part. <laughs> if you haven't heard of this book, basically from what I understand, it's about a young boy named Emmett who I believe works on a farm and one day he is called upon to become the apprentice to a bookbinder. And in this world, I believe it's set in like England, um, sort of, but it's kept vague. But in this version of the world, um, if you want to remove a bad memory or a bad experience, you can go to a bookbinder and they will bind your memory into a book and then you will just have no recollection of the bad thing that happened to you that you wanted to remove. Sort of like, um, I think there's a film called like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I think it's a little bit similar to how that works. Um, and then the twist is supposed to be that um, one day while uh, working with the bookbinder, Emmett finds a book that has his name on it and he has no idea why. So that sounds pretty interesting. Um, I've heard some people calling this book gothic as well, which, uh, yes. Um, if you couldn't tell, I am at heart a little gothic magpie and I am very excited to read something that might be a little bit on the darker side. So I think without any further ado, um, I'm going to read the first chapter and I'll let you know how I feel after reading the first chapter. I mean, I'm assuming it has chapters. Some books don't, which might be awkward <laughs> if it doesn't, but my plan is to read the first chapter and get back to you guys on how I'm feeling and I guess then to just keep reading as I go about my day. So stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so I've just finished the first chapter and it's really interesting. Basically, um, and this is pretty much just what I knew from the synopsis, but Emmett's parents get the letter summoning him to go be apprentice to the bookbinder and there's a huge argument but it's sort of kept in the dark as to why this is such like a serious thing. Um, Emmett's been like ill the whole time but he doesn't have much of a memory of it and there's a few flashbacks we're starting to get an idea that books in this world are a very taboo thing um, and they're not really something that you should read or own um, at least the people where he's from seem to feel that way also um, I did actually go and see Bridget Collins talk about this book and how she wrote it and her inspiration and such. Um, she came to speak at my local Waterstones. I remember her saying, um, as I was reading this, I saw that the book was set um, near a town called Castleford. And she was saying that when she wrote it, um, she had a vague date in mind in like the 1800s and a vague setting in mind of um, England. But the fictional place that she decided to set this book in, she decided to call Castleford. And she never googled to see if there was a real Castleford. Um, and um, there is, because I happen to live um, maybe like a 15-20 minute bus journey away from Castleford. Um, it's a pretty big place. And, like, I just assumed that everyone knew that Castleford was, like, a thing. Fair enough, some people in Britain maybe haven't heard of everywhere in Britain. But if I had made up a realistic-sounding name like Castleford, I probably would have Googled it before I published it in a book. <laughs> I remember Bridget Collins saying that she found, like, a website online that was... It was one of those websites where it says, like, oh, these are the places that books are based in or on or around. And um, her book was on there and it had pictures of the real Castleford and she was like, do I tell them that it's not actually set in the real Castleford? <laughs> because she did didn't know that actual Castleford existed. Um, so yeah, that was kind of funny. So um, just for anyone reading this, I am actively not picturing 
real Castleford where I used to spend a lot of afternoons after school. Um, the only thing I know about real Castleford is that that's where you go to buy really cheap blue slushies um, from Cass Market. So, but yeah, so far it's it's really interesting to read. At first, um, the last book I read was Priory of the Orange Tree, so going back to a much simpler style of writing was a little bit... it felt... the first few paragraphs felt a bit lacklustre. I feel like that also goes with the fact that I don't tend to like books written in first person, and I am reading this regardless of the fact that it's written in first person, but I will always prefer third person over first person, and that's just a personal preference. So I think what I'm gonna do, I just, I can't stop looking at this in the viewfinder, like, this is like, it's so gorgeous, like, this is just, hello, this book is gorgeous. Um, so I'm going to take this downstairs, I think I'm gonna make a cup of tea, I'm gonna go sit on the sofa, see if maybe my cat wants to come and sit with me, um, and I'm gonna keep reading downstairs just because, I don't know, I feel a bit like out of the way <laughs> upstairs, so yeah, that, that sounds like a plan to me. I just got distracted because it's actually blowing a gale outside and there's hailstones so so yeah sorry if it got really dark but um hailstones i'm just glad that i'm in here with my cup of tea and a candle and not outside Okay, I'm a little bit further through this. I think I can kind of see where it's going. I don't want to spoil it because part of the things that are revealed in the synopsis haven't happened yet, so I'm expecting those to happen. And I think I know what the um, illness he's suffering from is, again, because of what I heard at the um, talk with the author. And I, I, think, I think I kind of have an idea of um, what the first twist is leading up to, and yeah, I'm, I'm really drawn into this right now. Yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I can definitely see the sort of gothic um, influence, like, creeping in at pars. It doesn't feel very gothic yet, but I have a feeling that it's gonna get that way. So, uh, you, you can't see her right now, you can probably hear her, my, my cat's come to see me. Um, I think I'm just gonna keep on reading this, but, um, I'm not gonna fill my memory card with, like, just loads of footage of me reading um, in the same space so I'm probably not going to film that but I'm going to keep reading this and I'll probably check back in with you like as I get further through the book. I have high hopes for it at the moment but we'll see how it turns out. So um, from me and my cat um, I'll, I'll see you in a bit. See you later.
before I do any more reading, I have to edit my um, reading vlog for the Priory of the Orange Tree, which I'm probably going to post in a few days. So um, I'm going to take a break and do some editing for YouTube, like a good little booktuber. And I'll maybe show you my horrific process of exporting the video like four times before I get to upload it. days since I filmed but I finally finished the binding. I finished this a few days ago but it's still pretty much like still in the forefront of my mind so I think I'm still good to talk about my feelings on it. So I I really really liked this book. Going into it um, I had wondered whether or not this would be my uh, first five star read of the year um, but again I think to get a five star read out of me um, a book just has to capture like something it has to leave something with me like it has to leave like a really deep impression on me I have to like really love the book to want to give it a five stars because that's like that means it's like the best of the best while I really really did like this when I'd finished it I didn't spend that much time still thinking about the characters or thinking about the world or the plot it's like I really enjoyed it while I was reading it but not to the point where like I don't miss the book. I'm happy that I've read it. I feel like if I finish a book and I miss the book that's that's when I know that like it's really made an impression on me. So I think overall on my Goodreads I rated this a four stars but to clarify I want to give it a higher four stars than I gave The Priory of the Orange Tree. Um, so maybe like maybe a 4.5 maybe like a four point somewhere between a 4 and a 4.5. So it is currently my favourite book of the year. I think I've read, I think so far I've read like 8 books this year now um, and this has been my favourite so far and um, I would really love to recommend it to people. I have to say though one thing which I think tempered my enjoyment of this book a little bit was just how much the synopsis kind of gives away. So it was mentioned at the author talk, even though it's not in the synopsis, that this book does centre around a male-male romance, which it does kind of form like a huge plot point in the book. And I knew this going into it because the author had mentioned it several times, you know, uh, I think it's something that you probably should know going into a book because like, why wouldn't you want to know? It's like, it's a huge selling point for books that they're inclusive and diverse. So I feel like when you know that and everything that the synopsis gives away, there really aren't many like twists in the book. I think I had to get all the way through to like part three before I didn't know what was going to happen, which is just the last third of the book. And I don't know, it's like, the, the synopsis was what drew me in. Like, if I hadn't known about this world about books and, you know, the twist about finding a book with your name on it and no memory of it, like, that's what drew me into this story. Hearing that synopsis made me really want to read this book, which is one of the reasons that I picked it up. But also, I feel like if I had gone into this book completely blind and I didn't know um, the things that were given away in 
the like the blurb on the back I feel like I would have enjoyed the book a lot more all the way through the book it's like all the way through the first half I was like well I know what's going on because I've, I've read that part in the blurb you know and all the way leading up to like the shock of him finding this book with his name on it it's like it's not a shock it's not a twist it was written on the back I knew this was coming and then I knew the thing that he had forgotten it's just like you know what he doesn't remember going into the book therefore you know what he's forgotten and I just I feel like I would have had a much better time like I would have been able to react better emotionally to like all these beats in the book you know the highs and the lows if I hadn't known what they were going to be ahead of time which is really hard to do considering that if I hadn't known those things I may not have purchased the book in the first place because they were the things that interested me I feel like if I could go to a binder I would forget ever knowing what the plot of the book was like I'd take the cover off it so that I wouldn't know anything and then I would have no memory of what it was about and I would have no memory of like you know the little potential spoilers giving away in the synopsis and then I feel like I would just enjoy it I think I would just like you know and just enjoy the ride a lot more than I did um, because I wouldn't know what to expect I would have no idea what was coming next um, and that I think would help a little bit with you know with just how much I was able to just enjoy the experience of reading it but as it is binders don't exist so my first impression stands it is still a really really nice read there's something that feels almost classical about it when I'm reading it I don't know whether it's like the setting that just makes me feel that way but I really did enjoy the writing that and it's written in first person which is not something that I tend to like very much but I suppose it's one of those things where I just prefer third person I prefer the sort of writing that that allows you to do the things that come with that like like the descriptions you know like little bits of omniscience here and there but honestly I really liked this book you know 4.5 stars it's my highest rated book so far of this year I'm really hoping to get at least one five star read this year because that would be really sad if I didn't um, and I really thought this could be it because it's like you know it's like LGBT romance and it centers around books and binding and it's gothic and you know it just has so many of the things that I thought that would make it a five star read for me but it just it just wasn't and I really wish I really wish that it had been but yeah hopefully you guys at least enjoyed my little like reading vlog I still honestly don't really know how to make reading vlogs I definitely did have a lot of fun reading this and doing this little reading vlog like it was nice to just take time to just like sit and chill with like a cup of tea uh, by the window while there were hailstones like I felt a lot of the things that I did during this vlog were like very in keeping with the aesthetic of this novel like we had some kind of like grey gothic weather and I did include like a little vlog of my trip to Nesbra which does not include Mother Shipton's cave but you know just the architecture and the landscape and like the crumbling ruins of the castle really made me feel a lot like you know I was living maybe somewhere close to the events of the book it was nice to like just immerse myself in you know somewhere that could be similar to the surroundings of the novel it was nice to just immerse myself in the book world for a little bit so yeah I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that makes that the end of this video um so maybe i'll see you in the next one peace out booktube <laughs>